The ABS data has come out for the provisional mortality stats as to the end of July, national data and state by state. We'll take a closer look at that. We'll also look at some of the major causes and uh, just a bit of a comparison to European data to give us some context. But first of all, let's make a statement. This data has gone up yet again, third month in a row. If you remember, it was 16.6 for May, 17.1 for June, and now for July, the figure's just in 17.3. That's 17.3% all-cause mortality for Australia. Now, if that doesn't seem a large figure, just to remind you, normally it would run 2 to 3% uh, variation year to year, perhaps slightly down, perhaps slightly up, 2 to 3, maybe 4% at the extreme. This is 17.3%. It's an extraordinary figure. And as you'll see later, this is comparable to Europe. But first, let's take a look at Australia, 17.3%. So how does this look? Let's take a look at the official ABS chart for the year to date. And we can see the average benchmark in the bottom line and above it, the trending line for the uh, excess mortality for this year to date, 17.3%. So as I say, this has gone from 16.6 .6 to 17.1, now 17.3. Okay, so what's causing these deaths in Australia? Well, the main killer is cancer. By far, the number one culprit is cancer, followed by heart-related diseases and dementia, including Alzheimer's. So cancers, heart-related diseases and dementia. At the moment, the increases are being reflected in extra counts for dementia, uh, including Alzheimer's and diabetes, and also some uh, increases in cancer. In a moment, we'll look at Europe, where they're seeing an increase in mortality for people aged 14 years and under. We don't have that age breakdown here, nor do they have it in the UK. But what we're seeing here, so it's difficult to compare, but what we are seeing here is a very large increase in people 75 and over, around about 23%. So the av national average is 17.3, but around about 23% for people over 75 years. Now, not surprisingly, we're seeing some indicators for major causes with dementia playing a large part, dementia including Alzheimer's, playing a large contribution to that number. Not surprising that uh, those sort of causes of death are being recorded, but in this country, 75 to 84 at the moment, that's what's showing up. Of course, a death is not registered in this country if there's any uncertainty as to the cause of death, and that has been an increasing trend. And uh, so, so coroners take some time to do their reports, and that will hold back the figures around three, maybe four percent. So as each month progresses, we get a clearer picture on what's actually happening in Australia. So let's take a look now at the state figures. And as you can see in this chart, New South Wales and Victoria are hitting around the mark of 17%. So they're on average, more or less. Whereas Queensland and the ACT are around the 20% mark. So significantly higher, and that might be influenced by demographics, especially if you have an older uh, population living, say, in Queensland. But Northern Territory, quite low. So from 17 up to 20, right down to the Northern Territory stat, and that's what's happening nationally. So before we go to Europe, let's just summarise that. We've got a national average of 17.3%, third increase in a row over the last three months. It seems to be trending that way. We're getting more data coming through as coroners uh, publish their uh, findings and the death is registered. We are seeing an increase in cancer, dementia and diabetes, and a particular increase in that 75 plus age group. Main states, Queensland and ACT above the national average. So that's the state of the nation, so to speak, in terms of provisional mortality stats. Okay, let's go overseas now to see how Australia compares to other nations. The US doesn't have clear and accurate and up-to-date data, so we can't really get a read uh, of any great value from the US, but we can from the UK, where the ONS, Office of National Statistics, has just reported, just reported 19%. So that's 19, 19% excess mortality year to date. So Australia 17.3, the UK 19%. They don't break it down by age groups like we would like to see either. They do in Europe. So let's take a look at this, and we'll see in a moment this, this, this uh, YouTube report. However, 
what they are reporting from their data is a major increase in mortality in 14 years and under. This is for Europe. So European jurisdictions do a much better job of reporting this sort of data and they're showing that, that under 14s, that is surging. That's, that's not showing up in Australia at this point, but it is in Europe as this chart shows. Dragi građani, prema šokantnim podacima Eurostata, službe za statistiku Europske unije, suočeni smo s enormnim povećanjem stopa prekomjerne smrtnosti u državama Europske unije. U srpnju ove godine, u odnosu na prosjek od 2016. do 2019. zabilježeno je ogromno povećanje stope smrtnosti. Primjerice, u Hrvatskoj 14,6%, Italija, 24,9%, Portugal, 28,8%, Grčkoj, 31%. Ok, so that's a wrap up on Europe. We had a quick look at the UK. That gives us some point of comparison. Obviously different conditions, different settings, different health systems, but it does give us some point of reference. Keep an eye on what's going on in Europe. Those figures of Portugal and Italy, for example, are very high and must be alarming the people of those countries, especially the political leaders and will be having an impact on the health system. And Ireland has just reported a 600%, 600% increase in demand for uh, emergency healthcare services at hospitals. So this is, the, if people are getting uh, more ill and perhaps leading to death, uh, not only are we seeing any excess mortality going up in UK, Europe, and uh, our figures here, but we're also seeing a demand on uh, burdened health systems and the response times to that extra demand for health services might actually lead to further deaths, people not getting an ambulance in time with ramping issues in Australia, for example, or not being able to get a bed within an emergency unit and so on. So th there, there are all sorts of complexities to this story, which is why it's such an important piece of information to track, because this is where we live. Health and well-being is pretty crucial to most people. So. The stats are the stats, it's the story beneath the stats and the policies and the settings and the responses around those that are of real concern to us because as we move forward, uh, we have an aging population. It seems we have an increasingly uh, health challenged population and we'll need a health system in every state to be able to uh, respond to the demand. So track with us, we'll uh, get the figures next month, which will be out mid to, uh, I think around about the 16th of November, and we'll be publishing those as well. So thanks for listening, see you next time.